Forget gurus. Forget anyone claiming to be an online business expert without going through the challenges of entrepreneurship themselves. The Real Money, Real Business podcast is here to prove the best insights in online business comes from your fellow online business builders. We dig into stories of entrepreneurs selling their business on the Empire Flippers marketplace so that you can learn how they made their business profitable, how they overcame obstacles, and what lessons they learned in their online journey. If you want to take your business and your knowledge to the next level, you've come to the right podcast. Let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Real Money, Real Business podcast. We record these interviews so potential buyers have more information about the seller and the business to help them make a buying decision further down the road. Today, we'll be talking about an affiliate business for sale. And just before I dive deeper into that, let me give a very brief summary of the business. So today's listing is a two-site package affiliate business created in June 2015 in the information and education niches. The average monthly revenue for the business is $4,209 and it makes an average of $3,579 per month in net profit. The assets included in the sale are two domains and all of the site's contents and files, an email list with 2,583 subscribers and social media accounts. For everyone listening, you can visit empireflippers.com slash marketplace and search for listing 54807 to learn more about the business. Or you can unlock the listing to start your due diligence if you're interested in purchasing this asset. So Jesse, that's a very general overview of the business, but you know, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing? Hi Vinny, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. No, it's great to have you on. Can you share with me what your background is in building or running online businesses? So I first got into, I guess, SEO affiliate marketing, that kind of business model in 2015. Actually, these sites were my first and only SEO project. I started doing that because at the time I was actually traveling musician and working odd jobs to kind of make ends meet. It occurred to me I could probably make money online in some way. And I did a lot of research, kind of went down the rabbit hole of how to make money online, that kind of thing. And stumbled across the SEO affiliate marketing model and I understood it. I liked it. I thought that my skill sets at the time would allow me to be successful in it. So I gave it a shot and many years later, here I am. Now that's a really cool backstory for sure. So yeah, you shared, you know, how you stumbled on affiliate as the business model for this one. And I suppose that like you said your background as a musician and I guess your skill sets lent itself to starting the business. So from the public listing, it says that the business helps people learn a new language. So why did you choose, you know, these niches in particular? That's a great question. So at the time when I first decided that I would try to make an SEO affiliate marketing site, I took the idea of market research very seriously because from my perspective, that's kind of what would make or break the site was the market that I picked. And so I actually started with a pretty long list of just ideas, like anything that came to my mind, any like a lot of hobbies and sports, I think, were on the list originally. And eventually I came to language learning because at the time I was trying to learn a foreign language for the first time myself. And I immediately noticed that at that time, you know, this was some time ago in in 2015, there weren't a whole lot of resources online about language learning. And there really weren't a lot of sites that were providing good information on, you know, what the best courses or resources might be depending on the language you learn or, or what your learning goals are. So that was one of the first things that caught my attention about that niche in particular. Gotcha. It makes sense. So there's a sort of vested interest in there. Like you said, you were kind of learning a language for the first time. And yeah, it kind of seemed like there was a gap in the market to help that particular need, which makes sense for sure. Our listeners will be wondering, why are you selling the business right now instead of staying with it or growing it? That's also an important question. Well, I think probably the biggest reason is just that I tend to follow projects that I'm passionate about. I probably like many people in the online business sector, I always have a lot of projects going on at once. And last year, I uh, purchased a brick and mortar business, a local business. 
and have been very passionate about that. I really like taking marketing like offline to where you get people into a physical location. And in addition to that, I'm also starting a third business around a mobile app. I'm currently working with a developer, something along the lines of like a software as a service. And those two projects are very interesting to me. I see a lot of potential and I know that these two sites still have a lot of potential. Like there's still a lot of opportunity for growth, which I think we'll probably talk about soon here in the interview. But, you know, I'm just one guy. <laughs> I only have so much time and energy. And I've noticed the past year that this business has really kind of fallen to the back burner, not because I don't think it'll be successful, but just because I'm so wrapped up in the newer things. I think that's a really cool reason. I think it sounds like starting this two-site affiliate business is giving you sort of foundation to go on and explore that entrepreneurial spirit and that urge to find new projects and find new business ventures like you mentioned the brick and mortar business and maybe anything else further down the road and selling this business would give you the capital and maybe extra resources to really accelerate the growth of those businesses for sure so that sounds wonderful i want to ask you about your experience when you were building this business in particular what did you learn that you think you'd be able to apply to future sites or businesses you know just anything that really worked for you I learned that I really enjoy marketing. <laughs> and I think two of the biggest takeaways for me, one was know your target market. Again, I mentioned that, you know, when I first came up with the idea, I took like market selection, like which niche I was going to go into very seriously. And I was well rewarded for that research and that work. And ever since then, that's been something that I do with any business that I'm a part of, any project. And it's also, I found something that I really enjoy. I just enjoy like the strategy of it and the research of it, which not a lot of people like to research uh, niche markets, but I tend to get a kick out of it. And also I learned that especially with SEO affiliate marketing, you get a better response from, I guess, customers or website visitors when you give them something valuable. And when I first got into SEO, it was still coming off like the tail end of people who would make an entire like site off of one product and kind of like put a lot of fluff articles on there. And I think right about the time I started researching it, Google had just made an update that really hurt a lot of those type of sites. And so the model that I tried to do was to provide some sort of informational value for every article that I wrote so that even if, you know, someone comes to the site and they don't click through to one of the resources or courses that I recommend, I still want them to leave, you know, with some value. I hope to some level I answered their question or whatever it is they were searching for. And that's something that I think I'll take with me no matter what business I'm working on, that you kind of need to put your customers' needs and like their problem ahead of yours as a business. And if you do that, you'll be successful. For sure. I think that's a really good tip there. You were mentioning there's a couple of things that you learning. Were there any resources or communities or just influences or just anything like that that helped that you just found really helpful as you were on your learning journey? Absolutely. I would say it's authority hacker. Yeah. Like Gail and those guys. Yeah. I know they, they know Empire Builders. I actually heard of Empire Builders through their podcast. When I first got into SEO, they had just launched like the first episode of the Authority Hacker podcast. And I found their method and their resources super helpful. And in the beginning, that really kind of was the groundwork that I followed when I made my first site. So That's great. Yeah, those guys over at Authority Hackers are definitely a really good resource for sure. Were there any software or tools that helped you grow the business or to scale the business? I would say the tool that comes to mind is actually Thrive Themes. I know a lot of people also use Elementor, but for me, someone who doesn't really have a good sense of design, like visual design, or really not a lot of experience in building websites. Those WordPress plugins made my life a lot easier and allowed me to make a site that looks pretty good, given my skill set. So I would say those have been the most helpful. Yeah, really good shout. I think that'll be really helpful for our listeners who are just getting into online businesses for the first time, for sure. Let me ask you then, was there anything that you tried that wasn't really giving you the ROI that you were hoping for? 
A few years back, I kind of experimented with uh, running paid ads to try to push affiliate offers. And I think this kind of depends on the market that you're in, but I found that if you're paying per click, the affiliate commissions are not usually enough, at least in this market, to make the kind of return on investment that you need to run like an ongoing paid ad campaign. So that was something that, you know, I kind of messed with and then figured it wasn't right for this business. Yeah, that's really useful to know and at least you learn from that for sure. I just want to switch over to the marketing side of things now. What do you currently do for marketing for the business? Well, the vast majority of the traffic comes through just uh, natural search traffic through Google. For me, I think what has made this business successful has been the content marketing. Again, when I'm researching a language or writing an article, because I'm not sure if I mentioned it before, but I wrote the vast majority of articles on the websites in this business. I would really read about that language and, you know, the kind of common problems that a new language learner would face because languages are not the same, like not even close. And so the obstacles in one language will vary from another. And so I kind of let that influence the architecture of my site and the content of the pages. And I found that to be hugely successful. Google seems to more or less reward me with uh, traffic. And also, the website has a, a fairly low bounce rate. And I think that's because, one, in this market, people are naturally searching for recommendations. But also, two, the articles are very, like, written and tuned into whatever the keyword is they're targeting. That's great, yeah. So sounds like you really managed to understand and make organic search work for you there, which is great. Uh, can you describe what's the type and the amount of work that you need to do to maintain the business, I guess even a day-to-day or even a weekly basis? I would say that the business is running on a weekly basis at this point. Just very small tasks here and there, like update plugins on WordPress, or I do make a small amount of revenue from people who want paid guest posts on my site. I do allow that in some instances. So every once in a while, I'll paste that. And maybe every few months, as I find time, I'll try to write some new articles. But I think just off the top of my head in the last three months, I don't think I've written new content. And uh, business continues to uh, generate revenue and traffic. So for someone coming in and taking the business over, at least at first, just getting things started, it's kind of a turnkey business. They would just need to replace the affiliate links pretty much, and that would give them a baseline revenue and profit to work off of. Gotcha, yeah. So it sounds like the business is really pretty much in autopilot mode for the time being. So, Jesse, I wanted to ask you, if you did stay with the business, what are some of the opportunities for growth here? Like, How would you try to expand the business? I'm glad you asked that. Because I'm actually excited to talk about that, even though I'm selling the business in general. These kind of things excite me. I think first, I would probably go for the low-hanging fruit. So I don't actually remember the number of languages that I feature on my sites, but it's quite a lot. I'd say at least 12, probably off the top of my head. But even so, there's many more languages that get sort of, I guess what someone call like long-tail search traffic. And they have good affiliate programs for those languages. With every article I write, I try to recommend multiple courses. And I think just right off the bat, if you were to target some of these lesser known languages or just languages, maybe languages that aren't as popular in the English speaking world, it'd be very easy to get that traffic and you would see sales. I actually ran a experiment, I think it was fall of last year or maybe into winter, into December, I I don't actually remember. But I picked three languages that I'd never written about, and I wrote maybe four or five articles on each one. And I found that my my revenue, you know, went up a couple hundred dollars within a couple months. Now, that's writing a lot of articles. You know, I probably wrote 12 to 15 articles to get that. But there was no link building. There was no additional work outside of that. And so in my mind, if I were to keep the business, I would target a lot of those smaller languages because I think they bring in revenue fairly quickly. In addition to that, I think there's so many affiliates in this space that 
even someone like me who runs a site, I don't even always know, you know, the newest ones because there's so many like apps and courses that are always coming out. And I think it would also be worth it to kind of optimize the websites in this package based on the best converting affiliate programs. I know off the top of my head, there's even some articles that link to old affiliate programs that either don't convert as well, or there's even one that doesn't exist anymore. And just putting in the ones that do convert and that are relevant would also bring a jump in revenue. And then there's also the email list, which I haven't really toyed with very much. And the email list that's actually on the site now is just for one language. So if someone were to make a lead magnet to kind of capture emails for the other languages that are on the websites, you know, they could grow their email list quite significantly. And then there's also domain authority and link building for those that are familiar with SEO. I think that would also move the needle quite a bit. From what I understand, the amount of profit that these sites bring in is fairly high relative to the domain authority of the websites in this package. So someone who, who really knows link building and you know has processes for that, they would probably find it profitable. And also, if someone has experience or wants experience in creating their own informational products, which has never been something that interests me, to be honest, but that would work extremely well in this space if someone wanted to develop their own courses or some kind of downloadable content the traffic's already there you know the market's kind of already been verified so if you were to make your own products that could you know bring in a lot of revenue as well no that's great this definitely sounds like there's lots of roof growth there which is wonderful what would you say are some of the biggest risks with this business that a buyer should be aware of i think the biggest risk is that the traffic comes from SEO. I mean, as many people know, Google's constantly updating their algorithm and some things that maybe work today may not work five months from now. There may be, you know, something new that Google is measuring or measuring more and you'll have to update the site and kind of keep abreast of that to avoid getting hit by any algorithm changes. And that's just kind of a common risk factor in SEO marketing in general. Yeah, gotcha, for sure. Last few questions from me then, Jesse. How much support are you offering buyers? Well, I'm open to Skype calls and whatever help I guess they would need. In a sense, I'm still passionate about these sites because I see the opportunity for growth. So, you know, I'd be willing to give them a rundown of my experience with the various affiliate programs and you know, just kind of give them my two cents if they want it, you know, if they don't, cool. (laughs) But, you know, whatever support I can give them to help get them up and running, I'm more than willing to do that. That's great. Are you willing to commit to a non-compete? Yes, absolutely. My current projects are in no way related to language learning, so no problem, sir. And are you open to negotiating something like an earnout? Yeah, I think so. Naturally, you know, I, I prefer a, a full upfront buyout, but an earnout is also an option as well. That's great. So last question from me really here, Jesse. If you put yourself in the shoes of a buyer, why would you say that this is a business worth buying? Well, I, I think there's a couple of reasons. The first one that comes to my mind is if someone already has experience in this type of like affiliate marketing SEO business, I think there's definitely room to buy the site package, kind of optimize them, maybe build some links, see the revenue grow and kind of flip it and resell it. I think that's a good opportunity. But it's also, if someone's looking for more of a a long-term value buy, I think there's potential there as well. Especially, as I said before, if someone wants to develop their own informational products or really optimize the email list and lead generation. I mean, there's tons of potential long-term from these sites. That's great, yeah. Is there anything you'd like to share that you think I might have missed? I think that's it. I mean, I think pretty much covered the bases. Fantastic. Well, Jesse, it's been a pleasure having you on today's podcast interview, and I really hope to see your business get picked up by the right buyer in the near future. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks again for having me. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. To learn more and see if this listing has already been sold, head over to empireflippers.com slash marketplace and search for listing number 54807. If you're watching this on YouTube, click the link in the description to go straight to the listing. And once you've unlocked the listing, you'll be given everything you need to know about this business. 
So until next time, enjoy your digital journey.